We're also aware that not everybody will know the novel, and um, not knowing the novel opens an additional reading through popular culture to another form of serialised drama, the soap opera. In this context, our screens deal similarly with the lives of multiple characters, returning to their activities with the reassuring comfort and banality of routine, punctuated by moments of drama and tragedy that make characters from soap operas familiar and familial um, figures in people's daily life. Um, and we have a small uh, clip, well, not a clip, but Andrzej Zhuwowski's uh, film Possession mm -hmm. is a small nod, um, again, playing with this anachronistic dipping into um, different sources that Emma could be listening to in Emma's youth, in a scene called Emma Educating Herself, she um, happens to hear some of Zhuwowski's um, film, Possession, in which actually the director was going through a very traumatic breakup. It's about a very violent breakdown of a relationship. And here our young Emma is kind of horrified by what she hears. He says, you look vulgar to me, you have become totally someone I don't recognise. And given that we all know what's happening to Emma later, this is a kind of echo that we had a lot of fun playing with. So, now we zoom in on a, a particular case of this you know, gallery film exhi exhibition and what quoting does in that. And uh, it, we just would like you, you've all seen some of it, right? So, the scene one, with the two, two large screens where you enter the space, that is, um, uh, at first sight that is like the man on the left and the woman on the right, but it's not only suddenly you see the woman on the left and the man on the right. And that is because you also see not only these people, but also what they see or think they see or imagine or hope. Like Charles, is, is, he sees this lovely young woman and, and she's sort of flirting and he doesn't want to be seen and so there is a voyeuristic look and there is a flirtatious look and they meet and that ch changes their lives and that made, makes their lives and then later breaks it. But the, uh, the interesting uh, quotational aspect is that we uh, have taken this idea that the look determines what is going to happen from the novel. When Flaubert goes to the farm, first of all, that's a very cinematic Cinema didn't exist, but it's a very cinematic piece of writing when you see the close-ups and the farm and the movement and you see, you really see the landscape from a moving carriage that makes these bubbles or these, these uh, hobbles on the, on the road. But then when he is in the farm and he sees Emma and he sees her having blue eyes, grey eyes, dark eyes, the eyes change colour like 20 times in the novel. How is that possible? Well, because he sees it. And so what we put on the left screen is Emma in her detail, like her bosom and her knees and her legs and all these sort of the sexy parts that he sees. He doesn't see it really because she's at a far distance, but he imagines that that's the way she's going to look when he, she comes closer. And she is uh, also seeing this shadow of a man behind the window that is also difficult to see from the distance, but she sees it a bit and then she imagines it. And so uh, we quote Flaubert's playing with the look that changes things. So it is actually a quotation. And one of the, the little details that you all probably remember because it's so powerful is when he comes and Emma is just finishing a little glass of liqueur and puts her tongue in the bottom of the glass to have the last bit of the syrupy drink. And that is clearly a very sensual, if not to say sexual, image. Now we didn't do that literally, because that would be sort of a banal kind of quotation, but we did in it in, in two allusions, where you see her actually eat something, lick a bit, and uh, you see him looking at it. So we do quote it, but at a different place and in a different form. 
so that you have this memory revitalized. Can I show the clip? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes? There is another quotation here, I suppose, in the sense that the man is framed by the window in his own structure, right? Yes. And he's a love car. So it's like he's surveying yes. her from the distance and he is on top, so to speak. And she's framed by nature and you can see a kind of equation, the woman, nature, uh, and so on, right? So I suppose that, that it, it's also there that they both see fictions. She yes. sees a man in his citadel, right? Mm -hmm. A man who promises prosperity. And he sees a woman in nature who promises Right, whatever is connected with it for him, yeah. sensual joy. Yeah, yeah, true. I think, uh, I think there's also, maybe throughout the whole installation, something to do with thresholds and access to other spaces. And um, Emma stands on a kind of threshold of needing to enter something away from the farm to a kind of higher society. And initially, that's her husband, Charles. We'll just show you a small clip. Um, from the scene. Here they are talking about in the scene. Yes. 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 So...